Hello, everyone. Um, this is Kazimir Kekelka from Macmillan Education once again. Uh, today, I'm here with my colleague, Josefina. Uh, she'll be doing part two of our um, presentation on uh, teaching listening to, to teens. So those, who have, those of you who have seen the first part, this is just a continuation of that. Um, without any uh, further ado, let me pass the mic to Josefina and we can get started. Thank you, Casimir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for being here again, for coming back to a second part of uh, the listening webinar. Thank you to Munda Dorian, to Macmillan for inviting me again to do this second part. And um, I'm going to kick off because I've got, as always, lots of things um, to uh, help you with hopefully in the classroom. Okay, so we've already done the first part of um, this webinar, which was all about tips for doing listening in the classroom in general and things that you should do uh, when you do listening. And now we're going to focus on um, the Invalsi listening exam. Okay, so basically, what I'm going to do this morning is take you through five different tasks um, that are in the Invalsi exam and show you <coughs> how you can work with these tasks with the students in the classroom and the different kinds of exercises, activities um, that you can do in order to help them with their listening. Okay, so let's start with the first task. Task one, we're going to be looking at the multiple choice questions. So typically in the Involsi exam, you get an exercise like this where you have um, four to six uh, questions and you have a multiple choice, which is usually a choice of four different answers. Um, and this is a typical uh, Involsi exercise. So what can we do with this kind of exercise? Well, here I've got the instructions to um, one of the exercises and it says, listening to a young man talking about his favorite, listen to a young man talking about his favorite sport. For each question, choose the correct answer. So the idea is that they have their questions with their multiple choice. But this is the instruction at the beginning. And just with this instruction, there are very Various things that you can do. So what I've thought about is, first of all, maybe the students, knowing that they are going to listen to a man who's talking about his favourite sport, they could write down three questions that they think will be answered. What questions do they think will be answered when they know that there is a young man who is going to talk about his favourite sport? A similar task to this is what information do you expect to hear? For example, and if you know that you, somebody is going to talk about their favourite sport, what kind of information do you expect to hear? So you've already, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the students to think about what they're going to listen to. So the name of the sport. They're definitely going to hear what sport it is that he's going to talk about. How often he does it? Possibly you, they, they may hear this. Where he does it? Where does he go to do this sport? Who he does it with? Um, so th those are some of the options that um, are possible and that they may hear. So what you would do with this is you would ask the students to start thinking about what they're going to listen to. Then another other pre-listening activities that I've thought of are you show them the questions. So they've got the questions. They read the questions. So the first thing that they need to learn to do um, for the Invalsi is read quite fast the questions. They get a minute to do it. It is quite, it's enough time, um, but they need to remember that they have a limited time so they, you should practice speed reading with them. So what I do is say, okay, you've got a minute to read the questions. Go, 
they read it, close the book. And then they tell their partner the information that they know already. Okay, so read the questions, close the book, tell your partner what information you know already, because there's lots of information there already. Okay, but practicing fast reading or speed reading is something that they need to do. The second thing that they do that I ask them to do is read the questions and underline keywords. So in this case, we've got, according to Aaron, a match of sumo is boring, fast, dangerous, slow. Okay, they've got to underline keywords, Aaron, zoom, sumo. He's practicing this sport with some Japanese students at university, practicing. Who does he practice it with? Question number three, in the summer of next year, he wants to summer next year. Those are the important um, key words for this question. What's he going to do in the summer of next year? And four, at the moment, Aaron is trying to lose 10 pounds, put on five pounds, put on 10 pounds, lose 10 kilos. Okay, so again, here is trying, trying maybe, Aaron trying, uh, probably the key words in that question. But the information is really in the multiple choice because that's what you're listening for. You're listening for how many pounds is it that he's trying to lose probably because put on would be a bit strange or maybe put on because it's Zumo, okay? So these are the kind of things that they need to think about before even listening to the, um, the listening um, because the questions already have a lot of information in them. And before even listening, they already have lots of clues and they should be already working things out um, before doing that. If you were here, if we were doing this live, I would play the listening to you. But as you're not, we're going to jump the listening part and we're just going to focus on the um, theory, okay? So another thing that I do once they've already listened to the task is use the tape script. I think that this is one of the things that is not um, used enough and should be used much more um, for many things. So here I've written post listening activities. Once finished, look at the tape script script and ask the students to highlight where the answers are. So what I ask them to do is look at the questions and then go and look at where the answers are. And in this case, I've put the answers in blue. So um, the first question was, according to Aaron, a match of sumo is, and he says here, a match usually only lasts a few minutes, which makes it fast and exciting, and they had boring, fast, dangerous, and slow. So obviously the answer is fast. Then they had, um, the second question was, he's practicing this sport with some Japanese students at the university, etc. who he's practicing it with. And I've put here, I'm trying with five or six other guys three or four times a week. Actually, six guys and two girls. So careful here, because the other thing that I ask them to do is to look for distractors. And in this case, the distractor is actually, okay? Actually, the beginning is the distractor because they say, I'm trying with five or six other guys three or four times a week. But then he specifies actually six guys and two girls. So you've got to be careful with that because that is a distractor. It says here with some Japanese students at university in a male only gym in London with other men and two women. So obviously the answer is D, but what we're getting them to look at when they look at the tape script is also things like this, distractors, okay, um, which happen 
in some in many tape scripts and especially in exam type listenings and it's really important for them to have a look at these kind of tape scripts in order to see where they're trying to catch them out okay the other thing that i ask them to look at as well are synonyms so I ask them to look at the words they use, are they exactly the same or not? So for example, in this question that we've just done, um, it says six guys and two girls, whereas in the question, it says with other men and two women, which is not exactly the same, but it's that answer, okay? So that's another thing that I think is very important for them to have a look at, to see exactly whether they're using exactly the same words, like number one here, which is fast, and it's fast, or whether they're changing the words slightly, because that's what they've also got to understand, that they're not going to listen to the exact words in the question, but that the words have been changed slightly. So they've got to listen to the meaning, not for words. They've got to listen for meaning, okay? And that's something really important, which by looking at the tape script um, is, is something that's, that they, they notice, okay? And which is important for them to notice. Um, and as I mentioned, also the distractors. There's another distractor here. So if we look at question number three, it says in the summer of next year, he wants to spend some time in Japan, start university, take part in the British Com Championship, move to Tokyo. In the tape script, it says, actually, six hours in, I'm also studying Japanese at university. So he says that he's studying Japanese at university now, not that he's going to do it next year in the summer of next year. And one of the options here is start university. So again, that's another distractor, okay? Um, in fact, the answer is my plan is to spend a month in Tokyo in July of Aug or August next year. OK, so that is actually the answer in this this uh, listening that I've pulled out from the switch book um, is actually full of distractors because it has a distractor in each of the questions. So, in fact, it's a really good example of how in the listenings they use these distractors to try and catch out the students very important to have a look at these tape scripts to look at the words that they use if they use synonyms or not how they reword the questions and if they use distractors as well okay so using the tape script after you've done the listening is something that i think is essential okay let's go on to looking at strategies and tips for this type of exercise. So read the questions carefully and underline keywords. So in, the, in these multiple choice tasks, make sure you read the questions carefully, they read the questions carefully and underline the keywords, or at least that they focus the keywords because the involves is all on a computer. Therefore, they need to be able to at least pull out the keywords. Obviously, with your book, they can underline them. And the more they do this, the better they will become at doing that when they see it on a computer. But obviously, they also have to practice these listenings on a computer because it's, it is different than doing it on paper. Number two, practice speed reading as they have one minute to read the questions. So don't forget to give them practice on speed reading. Give them a time limit. I've said one minute, you could maybe give them half a minute or go lower and lower doing that. Give them less and less time so that they get faster at reading. So they're forced to read as quickly as possible. Close your book, tell your partner what you know. Okay. Three, use the information from the questions to start building a picture. So as I said before, before even starting to listen, they already have a lot of information. They knew that they were going to listen to Aaron. They knew that the Aaron did sumo without even listening. They knew that um, uh, next year, 
he was going to do something special, etc. So uh, get them when they read to read and take in the information that they already have, because this is going to help them when they look for the answer or when they have to listen for the answer. Number four, listen carefully the first time to try and get as much information as possible. Five, use the second time to double check your answers. So some of them relax the second time that they listen, but they really should double check that their answers are correct the second time around, because that's when they can um, listen to the distractors, when they hear the distractors. The first time it's quite difficult to, to hear those distractors, but the second time it's much easier because they already know the listening. So make sure that you use that second time. And once done, look at the tape script to locate the words used to give the answer, number one, to see if they use synonym or synonyms or the exact words. Um, and to locate distractors. And really this point six, which I think not many people do, is very, very important um, because it helps them see how um, the listenings are, are planned and used and where they try to trick the students, okay? Um, task two, matching sentences match the beginnings of sentences to the endings. So this is a matching exercise, which again is an embolsy exercise. And in this case, um, it, those of you who were in part one will know about the Antarctica listening. I've shown you the example of the Antarctica listening, okay? So what they get are five beginnings and five endings. And what they have to do is match the beginnings to the endings. Okay, I'm gonna use a different one to show you what I do. So again, they have a beginning, um, uh, some instructions. Listen to the recording about sustainable fashion and match the beginnings of the sentences one to seven with the sentence endings. Okay, without even looking at the beginnings of the sentences, they already have a topic. And the topic is sustainable fashion. Once again, as I did in the first um, exercise, what they could do before listening is, one, read the instructions and ask the students to brainstorm words that they connect to the topic. So they already know that they're listening to sustainable fashion. Get them to brainstorm words that they connect to sustainable fashion. So, uh, clothes, maybe, um, eco, uh, eco-friendly, um, uh, reusing, reusable, uh, recycling, um, secondhand, um, anything that, that may occur to them that is connected to sustainable fashion. The point is that you're getting their schemata, their words the, that they know going, which they relate to the topic. In this case, obviously, it's sustainable fashion, whatever it is, they will have words that they connect to them. Another thing that they can do for a pre-listening activity is write down three questions they would like to know the answer to about sustainable fashion. So they may not know a lot about sustainable fashion, or they may. Um, and they write down three questions that they would like to know about sustainable fashion. So what is sustainable fashion, maybe? As simple as that, okay? Um... Does it exist everywhere? Um, why is sustainable fashion good, for example? Okay, so they brainstorm three questions. Another option is just to tell each other what they know about sustainable fashion. Do they know anything about it? Make a note about the information that they know or just tell each other about it. OK, um, so what do they know about sustainable fashion? Are there any shops that they know? Are there any links that they know? Are there any websites that they know where, where they practice sustainable fashion? 
So just telling each other a little bit about that. And if they don't know anything about sustainable fashion, what do they think it's about? Okay. So with all of these exercises, again, what we're trying to do is get them to think about the topic before they go into it and getting them to think about the, the vocabulary related to this topic. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one. Listen to the recording about, okay, so here again, we have the, the uh, questions, the question, the instructions, and we have the beginnings. So these are the beginnings of the sentences, okay? And what I've written here is, ask the students to brainstorm what could come after these beginnings. It could either be the words themselves or the part of speech. So what do I mean? Okay, so I just give them the beginning of the sentences. I ask them not to look or to, to, to um, hide the, the endings of the sentences, just to begin with, okay? And they know already that what they're going to listen to is sustainable fashion, and they've got many people like. How can we complete that sentence? What could they complete the sentence with? So I do two different things. One is I ask them what needs to go after grammatically or what comes to your mind straight after that. Many people like clothes. Many people like wearing secondhand clothes. So already we know that one possibility is ing or a noun. Not all fashion companies, and what am I missing there? Well, I would think a verb, go, sell, like, um, pay. You, a verb is missing because I've got no verb here. So it must be a verb that's coming after that. Some companies care about, hmm, care about, care about fashion, care about the environment, care about, so thinking about what could come afterwards. And here I have the options for each one. So as you see here, I've got ING noun, not all fashion companies go play whatever um, like. Some companies care about a noun, I think maybe the environment or looking after the environment, seeing as we're talking about sustainable fashion. When we go shopping, it's important to, it's important, it has to be with the infinitive, okay? Uh, too many clothing items don't last long because, so in order to, maybe following that, or just ask them what they think is gonna to follow. Today, many clothing items don't last long because companies make them very badly, something like that. You can often reuse old clothes by, by exchanging, by mm, decorating, by adjusting, by, Okay, our washing also has an effect, I would say, has um, um, an effect on the environment. I can't think of anything else. Also has many or two or I can't remember why I thought of those, but those were the ones that I genuinely thought of that may come after. Okay, so and having them think about what should come after that. And obviously they don't have time to do this in the listening, but what you are doing is that you are training them to look out for what they think would come after these words, which will make it more easy for them to match the beginning to the endings of the sentences. And to be honest with you, lots of these exercises where they have to match the beginning with the ending, they can do without even listening. And you're going to see how, I'm not sure if I if I did incorporate for you to do this or not. Yes, this is the end, the endings of the sentences, okay? So now they have the endings of the sentences and they now have to read and match the endings to the beginnings. They've already worked on remember this. 
So they already know what to look out for as the next part of those sentences or what they think they should look out for. And you can take these and write them on the board as options, okay? And then they look at the endings and see if they can match the endings to the beginnings. So many people like buying clothes online. So one F. I'm doing it now because I haven't done it actually in this, so I'm going to check it. Two, not all fashion companies. Uh, are the same, I would say. 2G. Some companies care about the environmental impact of their products, definitely. 3A. So do it with me. Do it with me. I'm sure that you will be able to do it. When we when we shopping, it's important when we go shopping. Sorry, I must have missed out the verb there. When we go shopping, it's important to choose sustainable brands. E, 4E we're going for. Five. Today, many clothing items don't last long, obviously, because they are poor quality. 5I. Uh, six, you can often reuse old clothes to create new items, I would put. Six, B. And seven, our washing also has an impact or... I think that probably is missing has. Has, an, has an, a significant impact, environmental impact, H. Yes, seven is H, but written wrongly by me, probably, has a significant environmental impact. I probably missed out the has there, okay? But they've matched it before even listening. They don't need to listen to match it. In fact, all they need to listen to is to see that what they've connected is correct. So it makes it so much more easier. So what we need to train them to do with this type of exercise is think about what comes after the beginning, think about the sentences, match them, and then just listen to check. And they've got, remember, two listenings in order to check. So what are your options with this type of exercise? Read the instructions and ask the students to brainstorm words that they connect to the topic. So they're already starting to get their head going on what they know about that topic. Two, write down three questions they would like to know about sustainable fashion. Three, tell each other what they know about the listening topic. So these were the pre-listening um, exercises. Then read the beginnings and think about how they might end could be grammatically or just in words, okay? Um, what they, how they think it may end. Uh, five, elicit the different options for endings. This could be either grammar or the word itself. So you can elicit that onto the whiteboard, get ideas from the students. Six, read the beginnings and the ends and match them like we did. And remember to reread to check the sentences make sense. So obviously the sentences have to be grammatically correct, but they also have to make sense, okay? And as you saw there from doing that task, we were able to do that task before even listening, okay? And I'm absolutely sure that our answers are correct. So let's go on to the third type of task. The third type of task is our short answer questions. So in this case, we have listen to a woman talking about food De deserts in her home city. Answer the questions using a maximum of four words. So they get usually in the Inval C seven questions, open questions. They don't get any options and they have to answer the, these questions. Okay. So once again, lots of things that we can do with this type of task. Um, whoops. Sorry, I've gone back. Um, Pre-listening options, brainstorm vocabulary, 
tell each other what they know about the topic, tell each other the information they already know without even listening and from just looking at the questions. So if we just look at the questions, we've got where does Jasmine come from? What percentage of the population there is food insecure? What kind of problems does this lack of food options create? So they read the questions because the questions give them information already. So those are the three pre-listening exercises that they can do. But then I've looked at another option for before they listen. Try and guess the type of information which you will be listening for. So are you going to listen for a name, a number, a place, a person, the actual information, etc. Okay. So what I mean is getting the students to look at each one of these questions individually and getting them to try and guess what the answers are. Or in two ways, either the type of answer that they're listening for or the exact word. So let's do this together once again. Where does Jasmine come from? Okay, so what obviously are we going to listen for there? We're listening for either a city or a country. No, Paris, France, somewhere, the name of some kind of place. OK, what percentage of the population there is food insecure? What do I need to listen for here? Well, obviously, a percentage, a number in percent. What kind of problems does this lack of food options create? What kind of problems could the lack of food create? Malnutrition, illness, famine. So those are some of my guesses, okay? Four, according to Jasmine, what causes food deserts? Now, they've already done a reading on this in the book, by the way, so they already have more information than me and you. OK, if they don't know what it is, but they will know because they've just done a reading. But if they don't know and um, they can guess what they think it means. OK, I've put lack of money because I haven't done the reading, so I've got no idea. What can help make a difference? What can help make a difference? So I put education, help from others. What is Jasmine growing in her urban gardens? Well, obviously, what are they listening for here? Some kind of fruit or vegetable, I suppose. Okay, a food name. Who does she invite to visit them? So a person or people or a group of people. So those are my guesses. And that's what you ask the students to do. You ask them to try and guess or to identify the type of information that they are having to listen for. Now, this has involved lots of other things before you get to this, okay? But what you are doing is you're getting them to read the question carefully, understand the question, and then make an intelligent guess, okay? Um, the actual answers for this listening, um, as we're not going to do it, I tell you. New Orleans, 23%. Chronic disease, general health issues. Political and economic choices. Okay, what had I said? Lack of money. Okay, political and economic choices. What can help make a difference? Community action and cooperation, which is help. Um, vegetables, they've put for number six, and school kids, which is a group of people. So even though they may not be able to guess specifically the word, and this is detailed listening that they're doing here, um, they are able to guess the type of information that they're listening for. And this helps them when they do the listening. Now, obviously, once again, they don't get that time in the exam to do it as slowly as, what, as we are doing it now. However, if they are trained to do this constantly, they get better at it, they get quicker at it, and it helps them on the day of the exam, okay? Um, this is uh, 
part of the, I think it's all of it actually, I, I did in the end, um, the tape script for this listening um, on food deserts. Um, and what I've done here is I've put the answers in blue, again, thinking about what you can do afterwards with the students, you can get them to highlight where the answers are, and the signposts in purple, and what I mean by signposts here are the words that change the subject and go to the next question or the words that, they, that help them to get ready, and in fact, later on, I call them get ready words, um, because the answer is coming, okay, which prepare them for the answer. Um, so that's something that I think is very important to do also, help them to recognize, okay, where do I have to get ready? When, here is where they're gonna give me the answer. I can hear that what they've said is, what I need to listen to because the answer's coming. I'll go into that a bit more later on, okay? Because we're going to do it in one of the other exercises. Okay. So for this kind of open questions, short open questions, um, strategies and tips, read the questions carefully, identify the keywords, as in all of them. Try and guess the type of information you will be listening for. So is it a name, is it a number, a place, a person, or the actual information, which sometimes is possible to guess without listening. Don't worry if you do not catch it the first time. Make sure they don't panic, forget it, and concentrate on the next question. So if they don't get a question and it's gone, it's gone. So say to them, it's all right. You've got a second time to listen to it. Don't stay on that question that you didn't get and miss the next question. Forget about the fact that you didn't get it. You'll get it next time and concentrate on the next question. Once done, look at the tape script and locate the words used to change subject question. Okay, so those are the signposts, the words that they use to change or to go to the next question, to change subject. And those are also important because they're the words that have to make you go, okay, I'm ready now. It's coming. Yes, that's it. Okay. Um, for example, there are some signposts which are very clear, like, Firstly, what I mean is then, for example, moving on to, in other words, in summary, finally. So depending on the type of listening, sometimes those signpost words are much clearer. In this last listening that we looked at, it's not as clear as that. They're, they're slightly different, but there are always words which they use to change subject to change question. Remind students to not write more than four words, okay, which is the maximum. And read again and check for spelling mistakes. Make sure that you've answered, that they've answered them correctly. Okay, we're going on to the next task, which is task four, which is note taking. Now, this task is in the Embalsi, but this task is also in the first certificate exam, okay, and also in the CAE exam. So, if your students are going to prepare for any of those Cambridge exams, the, these are also um, strategies and tips for doing that. So here we have um, a text, usually a text or sentences, where there are words missing. And in the Involsi, they use between one and four words. This one is, listen to a conversation about a weekend holiday and complete the sentences. Use between one and four words. Originally, Isla wanted to go. So what do we do in this type of task? So, pre-listening activities. One, very similar to the last activity that we've done, they should try and guess the type of information which they will be listening for. Is it a name, is it a number, a place, etc. Two, look at what is before and after the gap and think of possible answers. Three, predict, try and predict the information needed Sometimes it's possible to guess the exact word. 
Now, this listening that I've pulled out, again, out of the Switch book, the new book that's coming out um, soon, is, um, I think, quite easy, okay? This is um, for a B1 level. And these are the sentences. Now, let's look at these sentences a little bit more in depth, in detail. Um, originally, Isla wanted to go. Okay, we know it's about a weekend holiday. So you could have done all the pre-listening about brainstorming holidays, the types of holidays where people go, et cetera, et cetera, okay? If we've done all of that already, we know it's about a week, uh, weekend holiday. And we've got this first sentence. Originally, I wanted to go, where do people go for a weekend holiday? What are the possibilities? Well, here are my guesses. What would you guess for number one? My guess was to the beach, to the mountain, to Paris, to London. So these are my three options, okay? Two, her mum instead took her to a campsite, be lake. Now, for me, it was clear what I thought it was. Next to a lake, near a lake, or close to a lake. Three, on morning, they went for a boat trip. Okay, so what did I guess here? Again, I think it's very very clear what it is and it's got to be the, a weekday no or the other option that I guessed was the first morning however it could be on Monday morning on Friday morning on Thursday morning on the first morning on the last morning could be okay but there's not many other options really Four, suddenly the weather changed and it got cold and, cold and, and here, um, again, this highlights how important it is to focus on collocations. Um, it is really important to focus on words that go together, black and white, um, cats and dogs, um, those kind of words that go together in a language, okay? We don't say dogs and cats, we say cats and dogs, okay? And we say cold and, what do we say? Windy. Or rainy? Which one would you go for out of those two? I know which one I'd go for. Okay. On their last day, they cycled to, where did they cycle to? Well, could be anywhere. It could be to a castle, to a town, to a mountain, to, I've put the nearest town. Okay, so those were my guesses. So you would do this again with the students. Again, it could be, you know, your groups. It could be in pairs. It could be in groups. It could be individually. They could do it individually and then compare um, to see if it's the same. They quite enjoy doing this because they're predicting what they think they're going to hear. And mm, there's a kind of element of game in it because they don't know, but they're guessing. Um, and then you can see who got all five correct, who got three correct, who got, okay, there is an element of competition, you could turn it into a kind of competition. So what were the answers? Here are the answers. To the beach. Near a. Saturday morning. Windy. A town nearby. So in fact, even though I didn't get them perfectly well, all of them, but I guess the majority of them, almost the same. I mean, Windy was exactly the same. To the beach, I, I mean, to go to the beach was, was my first choice. Um, near uh, or next to, again. So it's quite easy to do this if they read before very well what they are, what the text that they have, okay? Um, so tips and strategies for this, always read the text before, as this helps you to know what you should be listening for. 
Um, two, remember you do not need to understand every word of the listening. Listen out for the information you need. They don't need to listen to every word. Get them away from trying to listen to every word. However, in this type of listening, it is true that they're listening to detailed words um, for the answers. Three, look at what is before and after the gap and think of the type of word that it is missing. Try and predict the information needed. Sometimes it's possible to guess the exact word. As you saw in this one, Windy was, there wasn't really much choice. Um, listen carefully and try to complete the first time. Make sure you reread the sentence once it is completed to see that it makes sense and is grammatically correct. And seven, make sure you listen well a second time to confirm what you have heard. So those are the tips and strategies for this exercise. Let's go quickly to the last one. I think it's the last one. Yes, task five. Okay, so this is our last one. And it's the true false questions, okay? Listen to the recording and decide whether the statements are true or false. That's what they've got to do. So in this case, we've got listen to an interview about excessive consumerism and decide if the following statements are true or false. Correct the false ones. OK, so we've got the subject, excessive consumerism. As with the first two tasks that we did, pre-listening activities are what do you expect to hear? It's about excessive consumerism. What do you expect to hear? So you can ask the students either to brainstorm vocabulary that they think they're going to hear, maybe like in a bingo. I don't know those of you who are in the first part of the listening. I sometimes do a bingo grid, write down nine words that you expect to hear in listening. And they write nine words and they cross as they hear them. And if they get all of them, they shout out bingo. OK, um, what do you expect to hear? Vocabulary. What kind of information do you expect to hear? It's on excessive consumerism. So what information do you expect to hear? Um, what questions do you think are going to be answered in this listening? Another thing, what do you think about when you hear the phrase excessive consumerism? What does it make you think of? It, well, it, there are certain things that it makes me think of. No shops and bags and buying and money and um, shopping and um, wasting and waste of time and waste of money and... Um, needless and many things it makes me think of, okay? Um, get the students to brainstorm those or just discussion questions also. That's another thing that you could do. Do you shop often? Do you always need what you buy? Do you think you are an excessive consumer? Why do people buy what they don't need? So those are some of the questions that they could talk about um, and just to get them going on the subject before they actually listen. Um, and then they look at the questions and the questions are, Daniel McGuinness is a university professor. The US population today is smaller than in 1970, but people spend much more. So they read each of the different questions and they guess, oops, and they guess um, whether they are true or false. OK, so what I did was um, I guessed them before looking at the tape script and before listening to the um, audio and and then saw if what I had guessed was true. Now, some of them are easy to guess and some of them are not easy to guess. It doesn't matter if they're not easy to guess. What you're trying to do is for them to read the question well, okay? And for them to read the question well, um, to decide, sorry, whether it's true or false, they need to have read the question and to understand it in order to decide whether they think it's true or false. And if it's a guess, it's a guess. So I guess that Daniel McGuinness was a university professor. I said it was true. The US population today is smaller than 1970, but people spend much more. Well, I wasn't sure about this one, so I put a question mark. According to the author of the book, excessive consumerism has a negative impact on our mental health. Well, I guess that this is true. 
During the COVID-19 pandemic, online shopping levels went down. Well, what would you say? Do you think that online shopping levels went down during the pandemic? Many people feel that shopping is a duty because it helps the economy. Hmm. I put true and put as an excuse because maybe people give that and it's as an excuse. I don't know whether they really feel that's true. But anyway, I put true on that one. The aim of the book is to help people become aware of their impact as consumers. Again, true. So the majority of the ones that I wrote um, were true. OK. So this is what I do with the students. Read the sentence carefully and try and guess if the information is true or false. OK, and then we look at the answers. So number one was false. He was a freelance journalist. Number two was true. It's bigger um, and people spend much more money. No, it was false. Sorry. Number two was false. I've, I've done that wrong. But anyway, it was false, um, etc. So what I get them to do, these were the answers. What I get them to do is guess, listen, tick or cross whether they did it right or wrong, and then look at the tape script once again. And in this, this exercise, what I've done are three different things, okay? I asked them to look for, get ready for the answer, the answer, and any distractors that they saw. And this is just a snippet. It's not all of the uh, tape script for this uh, listening. It's just a part of it. And, um, this get ready, this here, um, I'm here with Daniel McGuinness. This is the introduction and that's the get ready because it's going to tell you who this Daniel is. And a freelance journalist afterwards is the answer. OK, and then the US population today is again is get ready. Get ready because the answer's coming. And the answer was 60% larger than it was in 1970. But consumer spending is up 400%, which is a, which is incredible. Um, so what I do is I give them the tape script. I get them to highlight the part that I that indicates get ready because the answer is coming. The answer. And in this case, I also got them to look at the distractor. There, there is one distractor in this one. We looked at those already before, okay? So important for them to work on these after. Don't throw away. Those tape scripts are usually in the back of the student books. Use the tape script. The tape scripts are not used enough, and they can be used much more. It helps them to identify the synonyms. It helps them to identify the words that are uh, different to the questions, whether they are different, how they change the words, how to find the answer without listening for the exact answer. Because sometimes the students want to hear the, the answer exactly the same as in the question. It's not the same. So it's important to um, train them to see that in the listening, they don't use exactly the same words. And it's also important for them to see the distractors. And especially at a B2 level, the distractors are much more evident and in the listenings and they usually but or at the end of the sentence they change the answer or however words like this which which change it okay or just giving them the words of a different question or giving the words of all the options in the multiple choice. So working with the tape script is very important. Again, here are strategies and tips for this kind of exercise. Read the questions and notice the key words. Try to actively understand what the statement is saying. So reading, not just reading, but understanding what you're reading. Try and guess using your knowledge of the world if the information is true or false. So as you saw with that listening that we've just looked at, which is on excessive consumerism, um, obviously we could guess number two, which was 
uh, whether online shopping had gone up or down during the pandemic, obviously it went up. We all know that excessive consumerism went up during the pandemic. So your knowledge of the world, of what you know already, helps you with listenings. Um, work on the tape script afterwards to identify the answers, keywords, synonyms and distractors. Look out for the words and phrases used to switch from one question to the next. Um, try and identify where the get ready phrases are to enable students to be ready for the answer, okay? So we're nearly at the end and general strategies for the involvement. So I've probably repeated the majority of these in this last hour, but um, this is like a summary of everything. Read the instructions very carefully. Identify key words and underline them. Predict the information you're going to hear. Remember that you can predict this information in many ways, either vocabulary or questions or what you know already about the topic. Think about all the information you have even before listening. So getting the students to read the questions and talk about what do they know already? Maybe reading the questions, closing the book and telling each other, what do you know already about the listening without having listened? Five, don't panic if there's a word that you don't understand because it's not necessary for you to understand every single word. Don't panic if you don't hear a question. Start immediately listening for the next question. So forget not if you didn't hear it, go to the next one. Always double check your answers. Um, never leave any questions blank, practice as much as possible. So it's so important to practice as much as possible. Um, so with the Involsi, the Involsi is on a computer. So if they can practice this um, and if you can give them this practice on a computer, then all the better for them. Okay. So guys, that uh, takes me to the end of today's webinar. I hope that I have helped you once again um, with some tips and strategies for how to go about with the listening. All of this is training mostly. Most of this is training, training the students. Obviously, they don't have the time in the listening to do that as slowly. But the more that you train them to do these activities in the classroom, the quicker and easier they will find the listenings when they have to do them in the exams. So thank you for being here once again. And drop me a line to let me know whether you um, whether this is helpful. And, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Josefina, and thanks, everybody. And yeah, we'll see you all the next time. Take care.